There he is. Got him. It's too late. He's already on there. Oh my god. Didn't do a close up video last night, so I'm going to do one now. Um, it was rough at the pier. Uh, I didn't get a single bite all night, and I had a couple of live pinfish. So, nothing. Um, there was about five uh, or six reds caught, though, or hooked. Um, so that was cool. Got to see some big reds landed. Um, and uh, this, guy, but this guy next to me caught a giant, like, 40-inch-plus snook. Uh, he didn't land it, but he fought it and it eventually just, you know, broke the hook. But it was a oh, beautiful, massive fish. I've seen one that size milling around there. But anyway, that was cool. Uh, right next to me, same bait, and he catches it. Um, and the redfish, they were kind of all, it seemed like they were all off the pier, which is good because people were able to land them. They didn't only, I saw only two, I think, get broke off underneath. The rest were kind of out, so they were able to land them, which is great. But really not the same action as uh, yesterday, or the day before, yesterday the day before where everyone was hooking up and losing them, hooking up and losing them, and then a couple were landed. Um, so it was probably like five for six instead of two for 15. So yeah, it was rough. Did not hook into a redfish at all. Um, I'll go there today for a bit if I can get some pinfish, and I'll try it again around the same time. The tides are really weird, though. The tides are you know moving. Like a few days ago, it started about 345 when the high tide was, and around like... 4:35, they started hitting and the current was really strong and then for about 45 minutes they were your everyone was getting hit it seemed uh, and then the tide moves about an hour later and yesterday it just there was no current at all like at all during like right after the high tide and before and like low I mean just there's no current and, and like at the exact same time it's so weird at Sanibel of course there was like wind blowing in the day before really hard in a certain direction maybe it has something to do with it but uh, so I'm going to try it again uh, this afternoon uh, and see if I cannot hook into a big redfish. And now that I know that giant snook is uh, eating once in a while, that will be amazing. Um, other than that, that is all. Yeah, I am going to... I'm done with Sanibel. Um, it's expensive to park and fish here, and the fishing has been not very good, except for at the pier at a very certain time. So uh, Ding Darling, I kind of I caught my fill there. Sheep had a couple of snook. Uh, that nice, you know, 31-ish incher, you know, and that's it. There's not much going on back there. Um, it's really odd back there, too. Lots of algae, and um, the tides are really strange. Like, the really low tide is really low. Um, and so I don't really want to wait till high tide because I'll be at the pier. And uh, Blind Pass has just been a bust. I mean, I hooked that one little snook, and that was it. I haven't seen anyone else catch a thing over there. And again, the tides are really, really weird over there. Uh, the beaches are just not very fun over here to fish if they're not productive. So I'm just going to try some new spots. I may go to, um, what's it, uh, Lover's Key over there, Big Carlos Pass. I may try that. Um, I don't think I'll go all the way this to Naples because, again, it's just, it's all about timing and current and uh, I'm just, you know, I'm not going to try it. So i got to find somewhere to fish today because it's my last day. Uh, all right, I'll uh, figure it out and see in a minute. All right, so I decided to go to uh, <clears throat> Estero Bay, Lover's Key, Big Carlos Pass. I know it's almost low tide, but there's not much I can do about it if I want to get some fishing in today. So I'm just going to check this out. It was beautiful when I was here. I only caught the tiny little snook, and it looked very fishy. So I'm just going to check it out. Uh, and if it's too low back in here, I'll just head over to the, the pass, and uh, there's some, still some current going there no matter what. So. Maybe I will get lucky and actually catch a nice fish today. That would be awesome. Even like a big jack would be cool. Because um, I'm running out of time to catch a big fish. So this is it. A few hours left. Uh, to reiterate what I said yesterday. So I'm telling people at different bait shops about my fishing adventures because they're asking. And I like talking about that stuff. I like sharing the information in hopes that they share information with me. Um... But, man, this one guy told me he had plenty of pinfish, and then when I went back there, they were sold out. I'm not saying it's his fault they were sold out, because I know a couple guys got dozens of pinfish for these big reds. But it's not just the information. 
It was also the same guy who said they were out of pinfish. I see him at the pier when he's off of work fishing with pinfish. So if they were out of pinfish, how did he get pinfish? Anyway, maybe it's nothing. It's I should probably stop bitching about things like that. Um, but whatever. It's just been a rough week, and I don't know. Um, anyway, it's a beautiful day out here. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's cool and clear. And this spot, I know for a fact, is just beautiful. Whether there's fish here or not, I don't know. But it is a gorgeous place. So I'm just going to try to enjoy myself. All right. Talk to you in a minute. Looks good. That's yeah, really is a gorgeous spot. <clears throat> Listen to this. It's just a shame that the fishing is not good right now. Yeah, the park ranger was telling me that the red tide really affected this place. Um, and it's just really slow. I mean, this is just perfect, like redfish territory. So uh, I'm just gonna move along and I'll try to find a new spot. If not, I'll just head to the pass because it tends to be a little bit better there. So that's what he said. Anyway, that's it. Life is a story, and every day is a new adventure in that story. When it comes to fishing, there's always ups and downs. And without the downs, the ups aren't so high. And you gotta appreciate the heartbreak as much as the joy. And I do. Not just as I'm going through it, but later on when I'm editing the videos. I love the fact that there's downs and there's heartbreak and there's missed moments and missed fish and all these things because when you inevitably do succeed, the joy that follows is indescribable. So even though this trip so far has been a lot of heartbreak, a lot of missed opportunities for big fish, for target fish, um, it's not without its uh, appreciation for me. You know, it's it's been a great time so far and you know, I'm st I still have this last day, but I'm just feeling good about it all, you know? It's gonna make some really good videos. You know, I, it, that, that heartbreak really makes it for me, you know, honestly, because those achievements, when you get them and goals reached, are just more, you can savor them more and they're more fulfilling. So, uh, all right, that's it. I'm walking about 100 miles to get to this spot, so I hope it's worth it and I catch something. And finally, I made it to the pass. God, it took forever. Stero Bay is a hassle, lover's key. It's such a hike everywhere. You gotta hike for miles and it's just not worth the time. <sighs> Especially if you're like trying new spots. There's a, there's a bunch of little you know, spots to try. All I saw was that little baby snook. Um, anyway, that's it. It's already time for me to drive back to Sanibel and I barely got in like, you know, 40 minutes of fishing. So anyway, what a hassle. And it's the most confusing place ever. There's maps everywhere, and none of it makes sense. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, see you in a minute. All right. Um, this is it. This is the home stretch here. This is the, the end of the of the run. I am going to go back to Ding Darling and sort of putz around over there. And the reason is because it's free to park. You know, it's $5 an hour everywhere else. That's a, long, that's a lot of money for the amount of time I spend at these places. And I want to save that for the pier. Um, so I'm just going to mess around Ding Darling, see if I can't hook a, a snook or two. And then uh, head over to Blind Pass one last time. Hopefully this, uh, it's not the end of the run for these reds. Um, I mean, there was plenty of them caught last night. Last three days have been good. So I'm hoping this, you know, they're still out there. And I can at least hook up with one and get them out of the pilings and get a good picture, man. Uh, that would be, that would make my whole trip. That would be, make all the heartbreak uh, 
not go away, but a lot less painful. You know, one big fish would be nice. All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get at it. Look at this an iguana. That's the second one I've seen today. Okay, I've never seen that before ever. That's pretty crazy. On the way into Sanibel, before I even got to the bridge over in Fort Myers, I saw a big ass iguana sunning himself. And then just now in Ding Darling, a first ever an iguana in Ding Darling. How'd he get over here? It's crazy. All right, this is the end of the line. Um, it's been a pretty crappy day. I haven't even caught a fish yet. I only had one little bite off of a little sheep head and it was barely a nibble. Um, so I, uh, I headed to, I tried something new, you know, I explored Estero Bay. It's just not worth it down there because it's so far to walk everywhere. Um, so now I'm, I, I went to Ding Darling for a couple hours and the tide's not doing anything really. So there's not a whole lot of current and just not a lot of activity, not a lot of snook. So unless I want to stick around and catch big old sheep head, which I'm not really interested in, you know, it's time to head to the pier. Uh, it's about that time, so hopefully in the next couple hours, I can catch a big redfish. That's the name of the game. I mean, obviously, that seeing that giant snook that's like 40-something inches would be amazing, and any nice-sized snook off the pier would be amazing, but man, it's really about those big reds, because I know they're there, they're, they're plentiful, and hopefully they're still uh, coming through there. And I can get my hands on one. That would be incredible. That would just top off this whole trip. All the disappointment would be tempered. Anyway, about to get out there. Oh my God. Jesus Christ, are you serious? <laughs> Not quite what I'm looking for. Alright, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very disappointed. Uh, so it's a week of heartbreaks. Um, and honestly, getting cut off by that giant snook, that's a bummer, because I really want to catch a giant snook, but... It's it, it's such a gamble trying to fish around the dock like that, um, but the real the real bummer is wanting to catch one of those giant reds, try to beat my old record, and this kid is like pulling them out in the spot right where my exact same bait is, and he landed like four of them and hooked like two additional ones. That is the bummer, right there. He's like pulling them out left and right, and my bait is sitting in the same spot. <sighs> anyway, whatever. He's a cool kid. I actually, he actually helped me land my two reds three years ago, and he's he he knows what to do. He comes here and slays them every time. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's it for tonight. I'll do a longer closeout for the whole trip later. All right, I'm about to board the plane in Orlando. I don't even know how I got here. I was almost falling asleep the entire drive, I'm exhausted. So hopefully I'll fall right to sleep and be home. Am I directed to exit? Jump onto the slide.